Self-referential classes. So this is where pointers really come into play and, and become extremely important in uh, the development of software. So a self-referential class, very concretely, has as a private data member a pointer to an object of the same class. So self-referential class has, and it doesn't have to be private, but you know, in our in our kind of philosophy of development, it should be a private data member. It has a private data member that is a pointer to an object. Of the same class. Well, so what is the name of the class? It, it really doesn't matter. I mean, let's just you know put this into a concrete definition. Um, I, let's just say I have a foo class, and I need a private data member that is a pointer to an object of the same class. Well, if if my class is foo, how do I declare a pointer to foo? just like that. And now I can call this pointer anything um, you know I want. I'll just let's say I call it foo pointer. And, and that's really all I need to make a self-referential class. Now what could I do with this? Well one thing I could do, let's say I have an object a foo object, um, what can I make it point to? Well, this can point to a foo object. If I wanted to, I could make it point to itself. So I could do that. Um, maybe that's useful in, in certain contexts. But, so here's idea number one. But here's idea number two. And instead of just it doesn't have to be the same foo object. What I can do is I can create a foo object and it doesn't have to point to this one. What if I create another one? What if I create another foo object and make this pointer point to it? Well, of course, this has a pointer. Um, I can make this point back to here if I wanted to or I could just add another one and add another one and add another one. And in fact, that's what we're going to do. We're going to create these linked structures using this notion of a self-referential class. Okay. Now this is not very useful. I mean, just creating these chains, usually what we want to do is we want to store something else in these objects. Well, what is that going to be? Well, it can be anything. I can, I can put an integer in here. This could be a double. This could be a date. It could be any object that I want. So, you know, think of these as index cards and you've written some information on these index cards and then you've linked them together in some sort of an organizing way. Also pay attention to the fact that these arrows are directional. So I can move from this node to this node, but it is not possible for me to move from this foo object backward in the chain. Now we'll look at structures where we can actually do that. Okay. So we don't really call this foo. What we call it is we call it node. All right. We, we construct these chains or linked structures in each element of the link structure is called a node. And because they are directional, instead of calling this just some arbitrary name, we actually call it next or next pointer to be explicit. So let me let me rewrite this a little bit so it's clear. <clears throat> 